Patricia will be back in the order. And there's 10, 10, and uh, the 19th of August, 2015. First of all, we can go through some of these claims and you get that out of the way. Sure. Survey of food systems. And I assume this should go to, to Julie, probably sanitarian. Yeah. To her. I talked to Franklin last night. And just FYI for all you guys. When they were bringing those teams in yesterday at noon, they took one of those teams, cut it in half, sent 10 up to Granite Creek to see. Yeah. They thought and let the other ten go. So, and the guys at Gurney Creek said it's out. Oh, mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah, that's, that's they're that's completely under control, I should say. That's awesome. Yeah, I was there. So they were sending that half a team over there. Yeah. Here's the EQ. It's applicant is Bureau of Reclamation and it's a Hungry Horse Dam Power Plant. Also, Galton Gateway County Water and Sewer District. We've had Gateway before. Oh, it's on there again? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, I don't know who this should go to. Uh, I'm not going to read the names, I don't think it should be public. It has it in our old uh, program, so. I think the sheriff's office is that going to uh, look? Yeah. And this person, it was recommended that they complete level one outpatient treatment. And she hasn't done so. Is that the same one we've been dealing with? I don't know what I think. Um, yeah. Left I think maybe Brooke or the sheriff's office. Or, or uh, yeah, probably good start. Survey local government sustainability practice and a joint project by CMA. Uh, all these matters. We seek to understand how local government engages in sustainability. Maybe results were available on uh, let's see. What's it? For us to fill out and keep which of the following your priority in your jurisdiction, environmental effects, social and economic development. Dr. the Chief Administrative Officer, that looks to me like that's the chairman. I think maybe we should all agree on how that we want to fill out. It's just one of those surveys, like you probably get your local mail yeah. all the time or on the phone or phone. You know, these surveys is how a lot of policy that affects our citizens is yeah. made. 
Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of the old adage, if you don't give your voice, then you don't, or you, you vote. can't complain. Exactly. I mean, you're not going to let out yourself anything. Why don't you it? I think it needs to feel that. And I'd like to uh, either do it as a group or have Franklin fill it out and review his answers. Let's do it as a, as a group right now. Have it down there. Okay. Sounds good to me. Indicate which of the followings are a priority in your jurisdiction. Check all that apply. Environmental protection, social equity, economic development, or other. What was the second one? I didn't understand what you said. Social equality. Equality. E Okay. I'd say economic development because it hits everybody. Yes. It hits all those two. This is one. Has your jurisdiction your adopted a sustainability plan? Yes. That'd be our CIP and our growth policy. If yes, indicate the plan that contains a of strategies for any of the following. Social equality, energy conversation, climate change, economic development, Disaster mitigation, public health, community realistency, <coughs> green energy production. Would you read those again, please? Social equality, energy conservation, climate change, economic development, disaster mitigation, public health, community resistance. Community what? Res resistance. How do you pronounce Resilience. it? Resilience. 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 Okay, whatever. And uh, green energy production. Um, social equality, I'm uh, thinking of the CIP, um, that does, just because if you deal with economic development and future planning, you're going to hit that. Mm -hmm. So I'd say yes to that. Energy conservation, yeah, absolutely it does. Climate change, I don't think so. Ex economic development, yes. Mm -hmm. Disaster and emergency mitigation, that would be what we're doing right now. Um, aside from the, yeah, CRP. Um, public health, yep, we're also doing the community assessment. Com uh, community resiliency, absolutely, that's covered in the um, CIP. And what was the last one? Green? Green energy production. Um, yeah, that one is, in fact, perhaps coming. If yes, does it does, it's a sustainability plan include performance measures. Yes. Which of the following sustainability actions has your government undertaken? Hmm? Read that again. Which of the following sustainability actions has your government undertaken? Check all that by dedicated a budget line item for sustainability and environmental protection. Or environmental protection. Adopt a climate mitigation plan. Adopt a climate adaptation plan. Conduct a greenhouse gas inventory of local government operations. Conduct a greenhouse gas inventory of the, of the community. Set greenhouse gas reduction targets for local government operations. Set greenhouse gas reduction targets for the community. Mm -hmm. Any of those? Uh, the budget, um, we haven't dedicated it, but we have targeted what costs would be. That's it. Your local government had to respond to a major disaster in the past 15 years. Yeah, uh, quite a few. Yeah, there's one you want, huh? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Take your pick. Hurricane, earthquake, tornado, wildfire, flood. Yes. Drought. Yes. yes. Blizzard, ice storm. Yes. yes. <laughs> Toxic spill. I don't think of any. I don't think so. Mm. Yep, I see Baker Townsend. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's right, I forgot about it. Yep, and, the, and there, um, there was something out there because I remember when we closing down Bob Hossville. Yep, the uh, truck from the limestone mm -hmm. plant. Yep. I forgot about that. Yep. Yep. Do you have a hazard mitigation plan or an emergency evacuation relocation plan? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. If yes, does either specifically address issues? At risk, low income seniors, and so on. Yep. Read that again at the beginning. What was that second word? 
if yes, does either plan specifically address issues of at-risk, low-income, seniors, and so on, residents? Yes. Do the departments in your jurisdiction coordinate on the following program or policies? Economic development. Yeah. Land use planning permitting. Mm -hmm. Environmental protection. Mm -hmm. Seek funding and granting. Yep. Stormwater management. Yep. Energy planning. Yep. Provision of affordable housing. Yep. Hazard mitigation, evacuation planning. Yep. Climate change mitigation. Nope. Uh, climate change adaptation. Open space, farmland. Climate change adaptation, I think, yes. That, that could be um, the floods, the drought. Um, what is it, gigantic El Nino coming this year? So that one should probably be a yes. Open space, farmland preservation. Yep. You localities in your region coordinate on the following programs or policies. Economic development. Yes. Now well, each question is Land different. Use planning and permitting. Yep. Environmental protection. Yep. Seeking funding and grants. Yep. Stormwater management. Provision of affordable housing. Yep. Hazard mitigation and evacuation planning. Mm -hmm. Open space protection, farmland preservation. Mm -hmm. Climate change mitigation. Climate change adaptation. Mm -hmm. Open space farmland preservation. Mm -hmm. Watershed management. Mm -hmm. Roads, public transit, and or bike pedestrian systems. Yep. Does your local government own any of the following municipal utilities? Electrical utility, nope. district heating, nope. stormwater utility, wastewater utility, gas utility, communications and utility, example, cable, telephone, internet, water utility. Is any part of your community served by electric cooperative? internet access to all? Yes. Which scenario best describes your jurisdiction staffing on sustainability? Dedicated staffing and chief elected appointed officials office. Dedicated staffing across multiple departments. Dedicated staffing with goals recognized across departments. Dedicated staffing within a single department. No dedicated staff and a task force. No staffing goal regulation. Task force. What was the first one again? I didn't understand what you said. Dedicated staffing in chief of elected slash appointed officials office. Probably be dedicated staffing across multiple departments. Say one and two. One and two and three, if we can have multiple answers. How much impact has public participation had in shaping sustainability plans and strategies in your community? A lot of impact, some impact, a little impact, no impact. What was the question again? How much impact has public participation had in shaping sustainability plans and strategies in your community? I'd say the most. We've done uh, quite a bit of A lot of impact. Mm -hmm. Please indicate how residents participate in planning strategies for sustainability. Check all that plan. Resident committee. Yes. Uh, resident committees, commissions, and or task force study circles. Formal public hearings. Yep. Public workshops or design charts. Yep. Community surveys. Yeah. One of those. Social media. Yep. Which of the following energy actions has your jurisdiction taken the past five years? Check all the play. Establish a fuel efficiency target for the government fleet of vehicles. Established anything. Mm -hmm. Increase the purchase of hybrid, plug in hybrid, electric, or other fuel efficient vehicles. Uh, install charging stations for electric vehicles. Conduct energy audits for government buildings. Yep, conducted what? Energy audits for government yes. buildings. Yep. Yeah. Establish a policy to only purchase energy star equipment when available. 
Actually, I think yes. I'd say yeah, it's probably pretty much a common rule anymore. Mike has such a, an eye on... Operators or retrofitted government facilities to higher Sorry. energy efficiency of office Start training. all over, please. We were talking. <laughs> Upgraded or retrofitted government facilities to higher energy efficiency of office lighting. Yes. yes. Upgraded or retrofitted traffic signals to increase efficiency. Mm -hmm. um, upgraded or retrofitted street lighting or other exterior lighting to improve e efficiency. Yes. Upgraded or retrofitted government facilities to more energy heating air conditioning systems. Yes. Upgraded or retrofitted facilities to higher efficiency pumps in the water or sewer systems. No, we don't have that. Install solar panels on a government facility. Seems any of them, any place. A school, but that wasn't us. That was a wind, wasn't it? Yeah, they have solar as well. Both. Mm -hmm. And biomass. Install a solar panel on the government, would that be yes, or check it off then? I don't we know. didn't do it, so. Uh, they had the wind turbine. But they may also have solar, but the question is to local governments, did we do it, correct? Is that what it's asking, or has it been done in our community? What it's is the question? Install solar panels on a government facility. Who? No. Okay. Install a geothermal system in a government facility. No. no. Generate electricity through ref refused disposal wastewater. Require all new government construction projects to be certified green, like LED energy and star, energy star, and so on. I don't think we were required that. Required all government renovation projects to be certified green, like LED, energy star, and so on. Do you track the impact of conservation programs on energy usage by your government? We do track energy usage. What was the question again? Do you track the impact of conservation programs on energy usage by your government? Mike does. FES has a program to reduce energy usage in the government operations. Tremendously. Does your government provide or support any of the following programs to the community? Check all the time. Energy audits for individual residents. Yes. Does the government or do we have? Does it provide or support? It, what is it? Define it. Does your government provide or support any of the following programs to the community? Yes. Weatherization for individual residences. Yep. Heating air conditioning upgrades for individual residents. Yep. Purchase of energy efficient appliance in individual residents. I don't believe so, do you? I don't think so. Uh-uh. Installation of solar equipment on individual residents. Mm -hmm. Energy audits for businesses. Yes. Weatherization for businesses. Mm -hmm. Heating air conditioning upgrades for businesses. Purchase of energy efficient appliances for businesses. Not that I know of. Installation of solar equipment on businesses. No. Please indicate if your local government has any energy conservation programs targeted to assist in the following. Low income residents. Seniors. Yes. Uh, yeah, we do. Thank you. Mr. Rocky. Yeah. Okay. Seniors, that, does that take care of seniors? Yes. Small businesses. Mm, I don't know about that. A nonprofit organization. Mm, Probably yeah. just those first two. Well, I think the nonprofit too. Oh, through through there, Rocky. Through Rocky. Okay. Do you track the impact of conservation programs on energy uses in the community? I'd say no. Actually, Rocky would have to do that since they're supporting that. So that would be yes. Mm -hmm. Now. FES has a program to reduce energy usage in the community. I believe so. Does poor air quality disproportionately impact minority, <coughs> minority or low income areas of your community? I would say yes, that's... Yes, no, or don't know. I would say that's a yes. Just the common sense of it. If you are of lower income, chances are you're using open windows versus AC. And when it's smoking like this, that definitely is impactful. Do you have local air pollution measures to reduce dust and or particulate matter? Yeah, we have the, the ponds at this end of the lake. <laughs> That's right. 
Yeah. And that's exactly why they went in. That's right, mm -hmm. yeah. Ours are big. <laughs> yeah, I guess it'd be yes. <laughs> I know. Do you have any incentives in your zoning? Like explained by review, density, density bonus, tax reduction, and so on for developers to provide community benefits like open space conservation, affordable housing, and so on? I believe so. We don't have any zoning, but our regs have the parkland. Yeah. So it's not zoning, but I would say it's still a yes with you since we do have that. Yeah, I think so. You regulation require allow or incentive the following in any part of your jurisdiction. Check all apply. Higher density development near public transit modes. No. Okay, not applicable. It says is that the ones check check require, allow, incentive or not act applicable. <coughs> Higher density development in areas with existing infrastructures. Accessory mm -hmm. dwelling units. Come on. Hi, Wynn. Hi. Good morning, Wynn. How are we doing? Huh? We're doing a survey. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is, there a, is there a gift at the end of it? <laughs> there should be. There should be. Yeah. yeah. Accessory dwelling units such as. I did post the detention job. So. Nice. Um, so it, it's it, the guidance from Michelle was to, to follow policy, uh, which is five business days. So it will close on the 25th. And um, so and I attached an update job description to it as well. So Good. that's where that's at. So, okay. Perfect. And I got ordered accommodation medals, uh, which has been really tough because the guys are always hanging out in my office. My guys get what are you doing? Nothing. Here. <laughs> they just won't. They won't leave. I'm like, come on. So everybody left this morning, so I was able to get a hold of Gal and get them, get them done. So. Uh, Would you like us to get you cake and ice cream or donuts since you're cops? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a serious question. The first part of you. Well, I would like to. You know what I what I what I what I'd like to do. I guess when, whenever I get these in, it's gonna, it might take. I to, I'm going to write a, like a sum up and then put it in a nice little folder form and everything. Um, but a certificate to kind of go with it as well. Like everybody, you guys all sign it. And the sheriff and I all sign it. And, and then bring them all in and, and then have a little presentation and stuff. And yeah, the public here. Yeah. So, I like yeah. that. So, I do too. Um, that's, so basically what they're going to get is a payout. Um, it'll be a medal that they're wearing their class A uniform. Um, it'll go on that. It, it'll be, it's just an octagon. Um, and then it's just a sheriff's accommodation. And it's a yellow and white ribbon. Uh, and then they'll have a bar that goes on their regular uniform. And so they'll go over there on this side. And so they'll have both. But, um, I, you know, I think these guys have, have done a pretty spectacular job this year. Um, you know, I, I have no major complaints, so most of the time, but, um, if you could, come on, you okay. yeah. Yeah. I would like to do it, do it, with so, um, Morning, yeah, so, Morning. Uh, I'm okay, just, I didn't yes. want to interrupt your meeting, oh, that's fine, <laughs> that's fine, yeah, I have only got some sleep, yesterday, yeah, 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 slept yeah. for 11 hours, no, <laughs> this is kind of, Brenda calls, just yeah, kind of next you know, you might hear, Recess, yeah, I was kind of praying to continue the show. Oh, okay. And, uh, and then, um, so I slept for 11 hours, and then yesterday I was still dragging, but uh, I got about eight hours last night, so I'm almost about right where I should be. So, you're yeah, looking more risky. Absolutely. A little bit. Your eyes are open. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they weren't open Monday night, I'll tell you. I, and I got home, and they dropped Stephen Deck, asked me to. He goes, can I bring my steer over and leave it at your house? And I said, yeah, well, that's fine, because it doesn't get slaughtered till November. And so I said, yeah, that's fine. Well, I come home Monday, I'm pretty down the road and look over, and I'm like, huh, I wonder why, where did that cow came from? It's in Ronsville. There's only <laughs> one there. And I was like, I need to pull in my driveway. Sam Shear dropped it off, and 
his truck and trailer still there, and I'm looking around and like, hmm, where's the strap? Oh, it must be that one that's over there. <laughs> the, the horses ran through the fence. So I was like, great. So I had to go get Ron Ringer, and we got him back in, and he was, he was a little testy with me. So uh, I was like, you know, I just don't have the patience for you today. I mean, it, it might not be slaughter time, but he almost got shot in the head. It's all good. Fun. So, are we meeting today on anything? We oh, are. Well, I can text you. When Perfect. Ready. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Lynn. Well, are you going to that other meeting this afternoon? If yeah. I can. Yeah. yeah. This this will have to come first. Oh. We have to get the button. Oh yeah, right. the commissioner. You know, the county comes first. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Have a good day. Oh, Bye. did you say that those tie dye people are going to show up? Oh. We'll talk more about that later. We should probably get on with our oh, okay. meeting. But thank you. Have a good day. Okay. All right. Assessor, accessory dwelling, dwelling units such as granny flats, granny flats, and basements, units, and so on. What's granny flat? Right. I'm wondering if that's, that's the assisted like living that we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that senior mm -hmm. housing down there by the post yeah. office? Granny flat, I think, is like if you've got someplace attached to your house that Mother-in-law, oh. grandmother wouldn't live in a separate apartment. Oh, okay. All right. That I would make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what's the question? Franklin? Accessory dwelling units such as granny flats, basement units, and so on. Do we have them, or what's the question before the list? Do we require them? Allow them? Incentivize? They're not <coughs> applicable. We allow. I guess would be the thing. Yeah. Mixed use development. Yeah. Yeah, that's a hard one. Um, Sidewalks and new developments. No. Clustered conservation subdivision design. Not consciously, no. I think the planning board tries to direct to that, but it's nothing. Okay. Low impact design slash green infrastructure, bio whales, rail, rain gardens, and so on. Sustainable or green residential or commercial building standards. Mm -hmm. If you have sustainable building policies, have they resulted in more green buildings? No policy. Do you levy developer impact fees on projects in your jurisdiction to pay for community benefits. Mm -hmm. Due to that, you like the fire stuff, right? Mm -hmm. No, there's mm -hmm. no impact fees in Broadway County. There isn't in the state, you can't have it. That's right. <laughs> so we're just following the law. <laughs> there isn't anywhere it should be allowed. Which of the following actions has your government taken to reduce or manage water usage? Check all the way. Reuse of gray or reclaimed water in government buildings. Mm -hmm. Provide for the reuse of gray water and clean water in the landscape of private homes or businesses. Mm -hmm. Use water price structure to encourage water conservation. Other incentives for water conservation behavior by city residents and businesses. Protect low income households from water service shutoff. Do you track the impact of water conservation programs or water usage? Mm -hmm. Do you track quality of life in here such as education, culture, diversity, and social well-being? Yeah. How are you? Hello. Hello. Good morning. Welcome back. Which of the following programs does your local government provide? Check all that apply. Financial support incentives for affordable housing. Supportive housing for people with disabilities. Funding yeah. for for both of those, yes, through Rocky, actually. Funding for early child care and education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Housing option and community yeah. for homeless persons. Yeah. yeah. We do for homeless. Mm -hmm. We have, um, what's the question again? Because it might not go that far. Which of the following programs is your local government provide? And that was one of them. And that was what? Read it again, please. Housing options and community for homeless persons. I guess no, we not do, to, like the sheriff's office will put somebody up in the motel overnight or something like that. No, 
doesn't apply, that's not what they're asking. Housing options for elderly. Yes. After school programs for children. Mm -hmm. Does your government provide support, like land, water, other services, to community gardens? No, I guess it. Um, you know you, what? Yes, it does. Well, the city does, but I don't think we no, do. No, the county does, frankly. Where? Through BCDC. Where at? Yep. Well, those community garden down here? Heritage Gardens is a community garden. Yeah. As well as the... Uh, flower beds and trees along uh, the city on Front Street. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's all supported by the county because it's supported by BCDC. It's not their project, but they support it. Therefore, we do. Too. Has your government added or adopted any of the following in the past five years? Check all the flag. Expanded public transit, widened sidewalks, walking or biking trails. Yes. Car sharing program. Actually, yes, through the um, Rocky again. Yeah, um, companions. Okay. Charging stations for electric vehicles. Expanded okay. dedicated bike lanes on streets. Yes, Johnson South Project. Bike sharing program. Public transportation programs to assist low income residents. Please indicate which action your government has taken to reduce or manage waste, implemented an internal recycling program in your local government. Mm -hmm. Started by the Require private Require a minimum of 30% post-consumed recycled contents for office paper use in government. No, but I think we might need it. We have a lot of departments doing that. Community-wide curbside recycling collection program for homes. Mm -hmm. Community-wide curbside recycling collection programs for commercial properties. Mm -hmm. Recycling of household hazardous waste. Mm -hmm. Recycling of household electronic equipment. Yes. Community-wide collection of yard waste material for composting. Yeah. Although it's not collected in the ability. Community-wide collection of food waste for composting. Pay as you throw program, which are based on the amount of waste discarded. Yeah. Restrictions on bans on the use of plastic grocery bags. Do you track the impact of recycling? I'm assuming that's yours. Hmm. Great big tracking. I think I'll take it. <laughs> How'd you get it? Well, see, I'm, a, I'm an investigator and <laughs> There was this pin on the floor, and I read it. I said, great big trucking, so I was under the assumption. Through my vast training experience that it was probably your <laughs> pin. Your vast training paid off. <laughs> all that money that you spent training me through all these years. It worked. It worked. <laughs> now, granted, it's probably about a $15 pin, but it doesn't, or equal, less. Or it doesn't equal out, I understand. But, yeah. Thank you. Oh, good God. Do you track the impact of recycling programs on recycling rates? Yes. Right. Yes, have the programs increased recycling. Oh, yeah. In developing sustaining, well, strategic, how important are each of the following sources of information? Wait, and read that again. In developing sustainability strategies, how important are each of the following as sources of information? Federal government. Well, the ones you have, very important, important, somewhat important, or not important? I'd say middle. So sorry. State government. Um, probably middle. Well, no, well, I think a little more than profit. Maybe between the one step up. Yep. Okay, I can go with that. Local, regional, or national environmental groups. Read that again, please. Local, regional, or national environmental groups. I don't think we do. I don't think. I don't think so. Appointed resident commissioners or advisory boards. Very top, top answer. Examples of other municipalities. Yeah, that's how. Yeah, top. National, or state, local government organizations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Regional government mm -hmm. organizations. 
Yeah, DEQ. What was that? What was that last one? Regional government organizations. Example. Yeah, Council DEQ. Again. They're the ones who got recycling started with a grant. Articles in professional magazines and websites. Oh, maybe no. Please indicate the source of funding for each kind of sustainability policy or program. Check all that apply. Reduction of energy use in government operations. That's, that's local government, one. state or federal government, utility, private grants or others, or no program. Okay, read that one again. Read the question and then give us what the answers are. Please indicate the source of funding for each kind of sustainability policy or program. So you got it's local government, state or federal government, utility, private grant. Or, other, or no program. Reduction of energy use in government operations. That would be private grant and local government and state. All three. Reduction of community energy use. Local government, state, and grant. Private grant. Increase in renewable energy in government operations. Same three. Which one? Same three. Housing affordability. Rocky. Rocky, that'd be private grant okay. and local government as we support Rocky. Is it two? Yeah. How significant are the following factors in motivating sustainability? efforts by your local government, federal or state policy. Again, very significant, significant, <coughs> limited significance, or non significant Federal or state policies. I'd say probably between the highest and middle. Federal or state funding opportunities. Um, same. Leadership of regional slash state officials. Leadership is always important, number one, or the top answer. Leadership of local elected officials. Same. Mm -hmm. Potential for fiscal savings. Uh, top. Potential to attract development projects. Top. Concern over the environment. Honestly, it should be top, but it isn't. Um, I'd mm -hmm. say once, yeah, middle or, yeah. Desire to promote social equality. Um, would you read that again, please? Desire to promote social equality. Equality, I think is what he's trying to say. Yeah. I'd say middle again. Mm. Pressure from residents. Uh, top, that's what really started a lot of what we do. Pressure from adversary groups. Adversary groups? Mm -hmm. Is that the word? Yes. Not advisory groups? No. Oh, then I would say bottom. I don't think we're... Blackmail Pressure for business and industry. Yeah, top. Desire, expertise of municipal staff. Mm -hmm. Top, I would say. Threat of lawsuits. Yeah, middle. How significant are the following factors in hindering sustainability efforts by your local government? It's the same answer to state or federal government policies. What's the question again? How missed? significant are the following factors in hindering sustainability efforts by your local government? State or federal government policies? I'd say the same as above, middle, middle to top, kind of right there in the... State or federal point. funding restrictions? Same. Same. Opposition of elected officials? Uh, it depends. I would say... At this point, it hasn't had much effect, so zero. Lack of funding. Probably second to the top. You have to have money to save money. Lack of information on how to proceed. I think the information's out there for us. I do too, and I think it's our job to do the homework to find right. it. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't say that hinders at all. I'd go to the top of that. Opposition of business slash industry. Okay, this hinders, see you're going the right direction, right? It hinders not at all would be the top. 
versus right. okay. That's, that, that's what I would say. That's what you have there in your markings. Opposition of business. Slash Is that what you have there in your markings, Franklin? I haven't marked it yet. Yeah, you do. You have four of them marked. There. I just want to make sure that when it says very significant, significant, limited significant. No, but what does this say? Right. It. How significant are the following factors in hindering sustainability efforts by your local government? Okay, so if it's very significant, you're actually opposite what the answers yeah. are. So you need to change your answers to the opposites of what you have there. If it's hindrance, um, and we say not significant, you're putting significant. Yeah, just reverse what it says. Right, so you need to reverse all those. You might... Opposition of... Oh. Franklin, that's a mess. Would you just put circles around them so it's clear? Opposition of business Franklin, slash industry. Would you make that clear for a person who isn't here watching what you've done, please? This is serious stuff. <laughs> would you circle is, them or highlight them or do something other than... I crossed them out. Franklin... The ones you told me to. Will you circle please? the right answer. Thank you. There. Opposition of business slash industry. I don't think we've had much opposition of business. So it's not secure for you then? I wouldn't think so. Lack of qualified private contractors. No, we have some good qualified contractors. I'd say not significant. Lack of staff capacity support. No, we have good support, not significant. Lack of community slash <coughs> resident support. Great community support, so not significant. Not challenge of coordinating across agencies. Yeah, we've had good there, not, not significant. Challenge of coordinating <coughs> across jurisdictions. Not significant. Threat of lawsuits. Not significant. The highest elected officer in my jurisdiction is Republican, Democrat. Nonpartisan. And non had no party affiliation. Yep. The highest elected official in my jurisdiction is male and female. So you have to do both of that because there's two women and one man. The governing body in my jurisdiction is majority. Please provide your contact number information in case we need to follow with you. Want me to sign it off or just put the commissioners? No, you're the chairman. Sign it off, put your phone number there. So, where are you supposed to have lost that pin? Oh, good question. What's that? See, I wonder where I lost that pin. I think it was a hundred dollar bill. As if I would have one. <laughs> that was called the year. Yeah, yeah. Was, every time I get somebody in my stash, the kids and the grandkids have got it figured out. <laughs> Darn it anyway. Mm -hmm. okay. This is at, uh, she brought it to us on the agreement between uh, Broadwater County WIC program satellite agreement with Jefferson County that she brought it to us. Okay, is it on the agenda? Yes. Is it for next? Oh, no, this one. Well, we was going to uh, talk about it. Because uh, she wanted this right away, so it wasn't. It, we said we'll do it on Wednesday. Yeah, this is a continuing continuation of a program we've had for years. So we don't need it on the agenda. Yeah, the only thing it is is adding services to Mark County from Broadwater, um, and a partnership with Jefferson County. So because it's continuing, it's it's okay for us to sign. I thought we agreed, except we already did. Mm -hmm. 
I'll make a motion then that we sign the contract. I have a second. We move to second. We sign this contract on this WIC program. All in favor say yes. Oh, I did. did I ask for a vote? Aye. Okay. Opposed? No reason. Thanks, Elaine. You went to sleep there for a minute. I did. I did. <laughs> no, he did, I think. Oh, yeah, he did. <laughs> Exhausted from all the reading. Hmm. I think those girls up in that big program do a good job. I do, too. And provide quite a nice service. Quite an essential service, I think. Mm -hmm. Is that water sewer the ambulance building? I think I got the right. There's got a number on it now. Whatever. Yeah. And is right. that? You know what I would like to do is maybe hold that for today. Um, I um, don't like just plant pan the pilt. I'd like to have a fund for that set up. We can do the math. Sixty-four eighty times twelve, or hopefully times six and determine what that, that cost is, mm -hmm. and then have a fund so that it's easier to track. Yeah. If you guys don't mind. No. Okay. You want to hold on to that, please? Thirteen new teachers in the school system this year. Thirteen? Wow. Oh. Here's the one from the silos on the water testing. We want to get out of field? No, that should actually come out of the silos fund. Okay. That's probably either the fund number on here, so I assume yep. that's that all we need be. to do is sign it and then put it in the pile of claims to be approved. Okay. You're going to sign it? No, okay. you're supposed to. Well, I will, but it calls for two, doesn't it? Oh, all right. There's a request here. You know, I put my name to request and I never get any money. What's the deal? <laughs> Don't they read it? <laughs> you know. No, let's see. That goes to the It goes to the claim file. Yeah, you need to take that to Tammy first. Yeah, I'll go with this pile here. You know. That's right, because we don't have. Uh, oh, okay, here's a uh, router reporter. And they got them all on there. It's a total of the. What fund is it out of? Fund 1000. Yeah, that's the fund. Uh, that one we actually have advertising funding. So all it needs is signed and then put in the pile uh, to be approved and returned to Tammy. Six fifteen. Uh, total is two thousand nine hundred forty-six dollars thirty-nine cents. Say that again, please. 
$2,946.39. Make a motion to pay for the claim. $2,946.39. Second. Okay, move to second with big claims in the amount of $2,946.39. All in favor? Aye. Motion passed. Second, we pay claims the amount of forty thousand nine hundred eighty-five dollars and ninety cents. All in favor? Aye. That's in our budget. But they pay quite. They do. Yeah. I mean, they're reminding us that we have when to pay retirement and transportation, but they don't mention the food. this and then Tammy or uh, Debbie will need a copy so she can put it into the schedule A for us to levy the the mills. Mm -hmm.
school's going to be lost when Pam retires. <laughs> she does a good job. She does a very good job. She's been there for a while. She's way too young to be thinking about retirement. Though. And I don't know if she is. That was just, just a comment. Yeah, yeah. I think she's about the same age as Suzanne, our niece, and early 50s, maybe? Hmm. Yeah, way too young. Um, yeah. I was trying to think. Suzanne's birthday's in November. Mm. Maybe 52 or so. Give or take. Yeah. Well, another one that I think we owe a little bit thanks to is Mike Conti. Yeah. And Dana. Mm -hmm. And Ed. Mm -hmm. um, volunteer fire staff. Uh, should all be included at the cake and ice cream. Mm -hmm. Sheriff's detective? Yeah, although what I'm kind of wondering is, is shouldn't we go through the budget first? Let's Otherwise, we're kind of just shooting from the hip Fine. and we're spending money we don't even know that we have. It's true. to me. I don't know what I was dreaming, but I know it was about budget because I could see this page. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to that? Oh yeah. You think, where did that come from? Been there, done that. Center reimbursement agreement with the state. That should probably be done ASAP. Yes. Uh, since Brenda's back, maybe ask her about that this afternoon. Good idea. I think that's something she might worry about. So where are we starting now, Chairman? CIP ones. Yeah, I think we did. And we usually do those last. Oh, we do those. We went through them every day, though. Yeah. Yeah. And approved them already. 
already if you're talking about the DES and weed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's done. What we need to do is figure out the tax requirements, tax levy requirements, information, and the mills. Um, and then be sure of where we're at so that we can make some decisions regarding the other issues. Okay, which one do you want to start on? Mr. Chairman. Good call. Okay, now we'll go to which on the list right here. That's the middle of it. Actually, I, th I think maybe a little guidance might help Franklin. Um, can we go ahead and start with the tax levy requirements sheet um, yep. for starters? A couple of issues that we need to track. Um, the uh, cash, it was the um, cash balance that Debbie gave us yesterday or Monday, uh, 54998. That actually needs to be, uh, that isn't what we were looking for. The budgeted cash reserves was the issue. What we have in the first sheet you have for the expenditure budget for the general fund is $17,557,157. We don't have anywhere near that in the general fund. She actually accidentally typed in an extra five. So the number should be $1,757,157. One million. Seven five seven one five seven. So then if you do the formula across the way, it, it alters most of your numbers. Um, but in looking at that, one of the things that we did on Monday is we were able to actually reduce the general fund um, by not funding a full time um, sanitarian and training. So that cut our budget, our expenditure budget in the general fund by a nice large amount, 58000 if I'm not mistaken. That sounds about right. Yeah, when you include the health insurance, 56866 So if you subtract that from the general fund, you come up with a new expenditure budget of $1,708,607. If you take that through the lines, your new budgeted cash reserves, and Elaine, I have um, another one of these. I made some copies. I'll give you one, and if Franklin wants one, you can have one too. So for the general fund, what you would have there, right there under number one, appropriation would be 1,708,607. Okay, that can Under appropriation. Yeah. Okay, and this is where that, okay, one, what is it? Is that the one we had before, that yeah. 1 million? Yeah. 750, okay. Budgeted cash reserves, which is column two, would be 294,116. Okay, repeat that again now. 294, comma, 116. 294,116. Column number three. Total required would be two million two thousand seven twenty-three. Two zero zero two seven two three. Say that again. Two zero zero two seven two three. 
Oh, two zero zero two zero zero seven. Yeah. Oh yeah, two million two hundred thousand seven twenty three. Okay, then columns number four and five stay the same. Column number six, which is property tax revenues, will also change. That will be five one three comma five five nine. Um, one thing with the property tax revenues, also with that number, one of the reasons it's changed is because um, I believe we should remove a couple of mills to help pay for the coroner going to public safety from the general fund. 1.82 mills, so that's subtracting 24,000 and change. And that's how we come up with a new, new total. So the total revenues, which is column number seven, changes to 1 million. Four sixty-two, forty-eight dollars. Okay, one million four seventy-two. What is that for that? Zero four eight. Column number eight total resources becomes two million two thousand seven twenty-three. I don't know. Two million two thousand seven twenty-three. Then you have your uh, estimated ending cash balance, which is the same as column number two. That's 294.116. Through this formula, the, that gives us a uh, reserves up by law can be up to 33%. That takes us to 17%. Now, when Harold was here giving the training, he said that really the 33% is more needed for your heavy equipment operators. Law enforcement is a good one. Clerical work, you can go down from that. Nancy Everson keeps Lewis and Clark clerical at about 18%. I would feel more comfortable with 2025. Um, so with that, what I would like to propose is that everyone in the general fund across the board just cut their budgets by 5%. Most people increased their expenditures slightly, we did. I think if everybody just cut 5%, it's a nominal cut, and that can take us up to, if we change all the numbers to reflect that, we would have 23%, if that's agreeable with you guys. In other words, the budget they have asked, everyone has asked, we're going to take 5% off that, right? We're going to send them a memo and ask them to take it off. Explain to them why. They can figure out where. Exactly, exactly. And then what we'll do is, they'll be responsible for their own budgets. We'll cut the bottom line by 5%. And I need, I've got something here that I want to bring up. I know it's not going anywhere. But I told him I would bring it up next year. Okay. And I keep getting asked about this. It's longevity, starting at five years, and it's at one percent here. I don't think there's money to do it. I'd, I'd like to discuss this, but I don't think we can until we get through the tax levy requirements. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I think it, we need to put this on with our other requests and address it more at the end of today's work session, mm -hmm. if that's okay with you guys. I'm fine with that. I just didn't want to get it lost in the loop here. Absolutely. <coughs> Al's been here 32 years. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Annie, you've been here 25. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you get a gold watch this year? One can only hope. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll have to decide on that. We can come back to that. Um, everything else looks good until you get down to ambulance. Um, nothing was presented 
They didn't spend much last year. I think they spent honestly a couple dollars. Um, so I would propose that ambulance, senior meals, senior transportation, that we just use last year's numbers. Um, and that's really the only ones. I'm fine with that. Okay. I can't find ambulance on here. It's number 2230. It's all over here, right? Okay. No, we're done. No. We're done. Um, I'm just going to let you guys know. We had a board, the search and rescue board meeting last night, and the conversation came up about our search and rescue boat. Um, and because it's 33 years old now, um, and it's getting a tad hard to find parts for. So we decided last night that here, probably in five years, we're going to start looking at replacing that um, that that watercraft. So I just want to let you guys know that in the long long range plan, we're we're going to have to look at doing something with that. Thing, so. Do you got money to put into a CIP fund right now? Well, I don't know. Um, we're looking at. I asked Debbie to see what we're kind of where we were at, and she was trying to figure it out. But um, we got to replace two snowmobiles, um, and so that's where we try to get that knocked out this year, and then um, start figuring out how to how to save money for a new watercraft. But uh, I just wanted you guys to be aware that that we are having a few issues with with trying to find parts and pieces for it. So. Um, it's, it's done us well, but it's also getting very good. So it's still seaworthy, it's just if it breaks, we don't know how we're going to fix it. So I remember when that was bought brand new. Yeah. And they pulled it out from behind the courthouse. I was clicking for it, and we looked out the window to see it. Yeah. Of course, the commissioners went out and had it really check it out. But yeah. No, it's been a good, it's still a good craft. It's just we're, we're, we're in the planning stage of, we're starting to plan to, to replace that. And, and at least uh, tentatively, you know, we're, we're hoping to keep it seaworthy until for the next five years. So I just want to let you guys know. So uh, we're already looking at different boats and kind of getting price comparisons of what, what we're looking at nowadays versus what we were a long time ago. So I just want to give you guys a heads up on it. So. May I give you a, another Thank task you. for your list of tasks? <laughs> Sure. This is a good one. Okay. The trust board's charge is to help fund recreation. Yeah. The reason you guys have a boat is for rescuing recreationists. Mm -hmm. Seems to me it'd be a great grant request to the trust board. Yeah, and we talked about that as well. Good. Um, and since they were gracious enough to help this year with the command center, um, we didn't want to we didn't want to abuse that that, that year. So. John says he's, he's still able to find parts that just get a little harder. So um, I know there, it's going to range between fifty and a hundred thousand dollars to replace that boat, um, and so uh, we're we're looking diligently to see what's what's out there and what's available that's comparable. But um, I don't want that boat cost back in the day. But um, it's uh, yeah, it's it's done its thing. So. Um, as long as nothing too horrendous goes back, it will be okay. So, um, and I think we should be all that to work towards getting that done. But we did find two new sleds. Uh, um, Dwayne Halverson uh, has been doing a lot of research because we have that. Uh, I think it's a 1990 short track phaser, and then we have a short track summit or something like that. And both of them are very old machines, and he says they. Because we can't even get where we need to go with those things. He says that'd be something if you want to, you know, go out on the flat ground and play in the snow. That's what you use those things for. Um, they try to get them up to where the avalanches occur. They don't even get there. So um, he's like, those really do us no good. So uh, I did. Debbie was going to look and see what we had for funds to to, uh, to get those. They're I think they're right around ten thousand. So um, each together. She's she's working on that for me, so because um, we it doesn't do us much good. We can't get where we need to go. <laughs> I mean, that, 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 no. So I mean, the last time we had that avalanche, we Brad Tony and, and Chris Rains were killed. Out of the thirty nine search and rescue people that I sent up the hill, uh, the only people that made it there was the family. Um, 
And so Bart, Bart's the one that uncovered his own son, and that doesn't go over real well when that mm -hmm. has to happen. So no, no, no. Um, we're, gonna, we're, we're, we're working at it. But, um, but then, we're, we're, then, we're, then I think that's um, kind of the, the consensus was get, get those two sleds replaced, uh, and then we should be, we should be sitting real well until the boat issue, you know, comes up. But equipment-wise, we should be, we should be real well. So, um, well, you got a new pickup. Mm -hmm. And so, and it is nice this year. I think there's seven or eight members that are actually going to the search and rescue rendezvous up in Helena, and uh, that's a three-day event. And so, I was pretty tickled that we had that kind of. Of uh, enthusiasm to go and participate. So last year we only had three, and they uh, they took fifth in the search and rescue games at the end of it. So they were pretty tickled. So uh, we'll see what happens this year. But uh, just kind of a, off the agenda. This is kind of where what the meeting was last night. So you guys know that we're trying. So we had to do a couple. We had some people. We, and uh, Myra's the treasurer now, and Teresa Connors, the secretary. Roger's still the vice president slash president because the president's in somewhere fighting fire. <laughs> so we only see him in the winter months. That's all we see, Chris. So, um, right now, so just want to give you that a little bit. You've got a pretty good crew right now, don't you? Oh yeah, yeah. They're, um, we have training officers, Nate Montiel. Um, Nate, Nate was a, I think he was a Navy SEAL. Um, he's got, he's been through all that winter survival uh, training and stuff, and and all that special forces type training. So he's 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 good, um, and he's been really working pretty hard trying to get training set up and, and making quality trainings. Dwayne Halverson, John Edstrom, Brandon Boylan are all directors. Um, and they, they do real well as well. So um, we average about 14 to 17 members each meeting. And so they're coming around. But um, the ones that, oh, I want to join, I want to join, and then they, they, they come once or twice, and then they disappear. And we have to send them a letter saying, see ya, have a nice day. But we got a, a pretty good core uh, group right now. So um, when they're up, you know, they're always out. So they do have the pig feed coming up again. So on the fifth of September. So yeah. as a part silos. So to sell. Yeah, um, and then uh, they'll do their auctions and stuff right there. So um, yeah, that should be an interesting event. It was pretty good last year. So uh, about 100. And I think they served 120, 120 or so meals. That's a search and rescue note for the, the day for you guys, so, okay? All right, All right. thanks, Wynn. I didn't mean to interrupt, so. No, that's, no, that's good. So, single service and meals and transportation gave the same? As last year, so mm -hmm. we don't have those numbers, but um, they're their own funds, so it doesn't affect the whole county. No. So, those should be fine. And ambulance? Same. Uh, fund 2190 is the comprehensive liability insurance. We've been paying that from PILT, and um, we've been holding 33% reserves for that. It's a one-time charge. We know exactly what it is. My question is, why do we need 33% reserves. So uh, for this year, I would like to use that um, outstanding 7,000 to help pay our insurance, which is 123, and then just use PILT for the balance. That makes sense. Okay. Um, and then the next one is the health insurance.
um, the health insurance. For some reason, the permissive medical, which is number 2372, is based on a formula given to us by the state. Um, for some reason, our mills went down on that, which you can see from your mill sheet. And so that puts more onto Fund 2371. We um, set our mills at 1881, so there isn't any additional fund funding for that particular line item. The total cost for the two together for expenditures this year is going to be about 738000 and that's because we added four people to our health insurance this year, two new employees with the detention center, and two other employees uh, per the settlement with Teamsters. So if you go through the calculations for a tax levy requirements uh, with that new total, you come up with 11% reserves. In April every year, we get a report from Teamsters on how much they are going to increase the health insurance. What I would like to propose, and I run this by Debbie, I've run everything through Debbie, um, what I would like to propose is that we leave it this year, leave what the County Compensation Board agreed on, and in June, if there is an increase, or we have realized a shortfall, a pending shortfall, because we won't have a shortfall, but if we have a pending shortfall, that we actually um, put that on the employees to cover that difference, uh, divide it between everybody and see what that is per paycheck at that time, and again, send a memo to employees to let them know. She, Debbie thinks that we will have an increased permissive levy for health insurance next year because it's one year back. So this year's permissive doesn't include those four extra employees. Next year's will. So she thinks that it, it may be not a big hit. So what is the permissive medical? That is a formula by the state. Um, that we plug in how many employees we have, um, and it just walks us through the same same formula as we have on, on one of our sheets Debbie gave us, um, and it just it just kicks back out what our total is um, in mills. And who do we write the check to? We don't write any checks. That's what we fund health insurance benefits for our employees from. And it's, it's, um, well, why do we have employer contribution health insurance then? Um, because employees need to also contribute. Um, I don't know where my, sh oh yeah, I do, it's right here. Whoops. This sheet that you got from Debbie a couple weeks ago has these sheets the back that show all the special districts, it includes the permissive in here. So you can just review it to walk through the whole thing. Um, the permissive is what the county, prior to you and I getting on the board, was over milling. And we went through that couple of years of bringing that down to a particular amount. Mm -hmm. Well, we reached that last year. So now we know what we're doing um, with that amount. We've corrected it in, in many other counties. Um, and so it is what it is. And then the, um, the other one, um, 73, whatever it was, 71, 2371, would, would it'd be nice if it kicked in the difference. But it's just a little bit shy this year. But again, in talking to Debbie, she doesn't see any reason we need to necessarily address that this year. We can if we want to, um, but we will need to address it in July if that's good with you. So I guess my question is, what, what say you on that? Or do you want to come back to it? No, I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, moving ahead then. Um, let's see. Uh, the next one is... I'm going to start on this one, the detention center. If you look at the uh, final column, you see that the detention center is sitting on 57% reserves. That's almost double what's allowed by law. 
So what? Uh, keep that in mind. If you move up to Fund 2300, I propose increasing the mill levy, column 9, by 1.82 mills, and that would be the coroner increase, and that would change all those totals. But right now, if you look at what is budgeted, for some reason, June 1st, we found $317,000 for public safety. Six weeks later, there is a cash balance in her account of $1,967. $1,000? she has got no reserves. She's got negative reserves for next year, which means she can't get through May or June with what she has in revenue. This is from a variety of reasons. One is she dropped a bunch of grants. She dropped a bunch of revenue and then has expected us to go to the citizens or cut other departments to fund hers. Well, we wouldn't do it for weed. We're not going to do it for public safety. We wouldn't do it for any other department, general fund. Um, you know, name your, your fund. Don't know how we take from one to give to another when it's this kind of a shortfall. This has been years in, in the works. Um, but it's just gotten to the point where she's going to have to make some tough decisions. Um, so what I would like to propose on that is a change to the expenditures, and we can talk to her about that. But I want to direct you guys to your expenditure sheets that Debbie gave us. Um, if you look at those, and specifically pages 40... 44. It's your thick packet from Debbie. You can look on with me, Elaine, if you want. It would be this one that I'm looking at. Franklin, you should have yours with you since we're working on the budget. First off, if you start at the top, and again, we're on page 44, um, I don't propose we do anything here. Debbie's already put in here the detective that is, is in my opinion, direly needed in this department. She's also put in the Forest Service and BOR um, deputy. We talked with Brenda, and she thought she could reduce overtime with a detective by 20%, which is $6,800. I don't think that I took that into account, so we'll have to double check my math. There was an error found under work comp, and so that, that changed. So then we get down to the meat of her budget. Office and supplies. For the past three years, she has spent $3,500, $6,600, $4,400, and this year she's budgeting $6,500. That's about sixteen fifty more than her average of the last three actual years. I suggest that we average out the last three actuals and reduce that. We've, we've got to find a way that she's not reducing personnel. If you go down every single line, operating supplies, she jumps up her budget by $2,300. Janitorial supplies, she jumps it up $450. Uh, clothing and uniforms is set by the union. That's a mighty jump, almost double what her average is. I didn't change it. Uh, repair and maintenance. I wonder why it jumps that much. We didn't authorize that much more in, in uniforms with the new CBA. I don't know. Um, with, uh, what is this line? Firearm supplies and training, uh, 1750 jumps. So if you go through line by line and just look at the average subtracted from what she proposes, you come up with a savings of this is 44, 545, what the total's at. You come up with a savings in just that section of her budget of $45,000, which is significant. It's a big budget, so it's not that significant. 
Um, the other thing is, is I propose that we take the radio services, which she has budgeted 10,000. She's spent between one and four uh, in the past couple of years. We take out 8,000, 8, excuse me, leave two in there and uh, fund that with the IMCIP. The new legislation, we are allowed to change the IPs, what they're used for. Interoperability in Montana is now SIGBI, and we're not sure where that's at. So that would be, and it was, to, it was truncating for the radios. So I think that's a good marriage. Um, so that's one thing. And don't they have all brand new radios over there? Ah, uh, they do. Yeah. Um, so this also doesn't include the reduction in. Um, it does include the reduction in the overtime. So then the next section, which is um, dispatch, I propose just leaving it the same because there's not a big difference there. Page 46 is the coroner budget. Again, it's a tremendous jump from the actual spent. And I don't know if this is done because I, it feels in looking at this like this was done because we would be paying money from the general fund mills. So the expenditures were artificially inflated. Um, so what I propose doing is taking them back down to actuals. Um, and taking the highest actual of the last three years because there's such splits in what those totals are. We can save about $7,600. It's not huge, and that's where the 1.82 mills comes from. That's the new total versus that. So it's a $5,300 savings in total. Now I suggest um, in looking at this that we take that right off of the appropriation for public safety by going across the tax levy requirements sheet, we can bring that to a, um, a reserve. Oh, and one other thing. I suggest we take $200,000 from the detention center and put it into revenue for public safety. I agree. Kim is here right now. She's the one that suggested she'd be working with us. Um, I, I don't know if she's working with Debbie on that but we have to do something. And when the detention center was built, that was the promise made to the citizens. So that would change public safety. We're adding 1.82 million, uh, 1 to 1.82 mills. We're adding $200,000 from the detention center. By taking those numbers across the line, we're still at 1.1% reserves, 0.08. And it's better than it was. It's better than it was. Um, Brenda is going to have to either find some alternative funding, go to the public, find some grants, um, or um, I think she's wise to have the detective. I think the streamlining her department is a minimum of the managerial work she needs to do. I think that will go a long ways. There's strong support with Corey, but She's going to have to look at where she can cut. Um, I think we're going to have to take, and this is from Harold's training, the way you figure out your budgeted cash reserves is you take your expenditure budget and you divide it by whatever you want that to be. If you're going to hit 25%, you divide it by four and you take one quarter and put it in your cash reserves. If you wanted a 33%, which we would all like, you take the expenditures, you cut it by one third, and you put that third into cash reserves. Um, we're going to have to look at that. But um, uh, one other thing, and I'm hoping this is the case. Otherwise, um, I, I'd like to talk to Corey a little bit more about other options. But we gave that department $317,000 that was supposed to last from June to November. June to November, because we did it June 1st. At the time, there was $14,000 left in that.